Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to wherever you are in the world. My name is Mr. Jason, and today I have a read aloud for you. Today's story is A Lesson from Martin Luther King Jr., written by Denise Lewis Patrick, illustrated by Rodney S. Pate. This is the month where we highlight our African American heroes, from activists to athletes to law enforcement to the armed forces, uh, as well as scientists. This particular story is about one of the most prolific African American activists known and that is Martin Luther King Jr., little Martin Luther King Jr. This story is about Martin and when he realized that there was a such thing as segregation and racism. Him and his friend Bobby played all summer long, but once school started, things changed a bit. And when Martin got the reasoning of why things were changing, it left him confused and he didn't quite understand. Now, this ideology was part of our fabric as a country for quite some time, and still today, a little lingers on. This story is for early childhood purposes. However, it's for children between the ages of five and seven, because there are some concepts that younger children just might not grasp just yet, but soon they will. So if you have older children around, bring them into the room, bring them into the area, bring them to wherever you are watching this video, and get them involved, get them engaged, because something in the story just might hit home. So join me as we read a lesson for Martin Luther King Jr. by Denise Lewis Patrick and read aloud to Mr. Jason. A lesson for Martin Luther King Jr. written by Denise Lewis Patrick, illustrated by Rodney S. Pate. It was a sunny, perfect September afternoon. Martin's first day of school was over. He was so excited. He went across the road to the grocery store to tell his best friend all about it. Bobby, I have my very own reading book. Wanna see? Martin asked. Maybe later, Bobby said. He seemed really busy putting cans on the shelf. Bobby's father owned the store. Sometimes Bobby helped out. Can you play ball when you finish? Martin asked. He and Bobby had spent the whole summer throwing curveballs and fastballs in the empty lot next to the store, but now they were going to different schools. Maybe, Bobby grinned at Martin. Great, Martin went off to do his homework, but Bobby didn't come over to play that day or the next. On Friday, Martin took some of his mama's oatmeal cookies to the store he shoved his baseball into his pocket, just in case. Hey, Martin called. He held out the cookies. I, I can't. Bobby said no before Martin asked him anything at all. Martin frowned and slowly walked away. That night, Martin talked to his big sister, Christine. You think Bobby's mad at me? No. Maybe his dad wants him to learn more about the store, she told him. Martin decided to ask Bobby if this was true. He watched from the living room window as the store closed. When Bobby ran out to get into his mother's car, Martin ran out too. Bobby, Martin called. My papa said I can't play with you anymore. Bobby's face turned red. Why? Martin asked. Because you are colored, and I am white, Martin. Papa says colored and white can't mix. Martin watched the car drive off. He didn't understand. Later on at supper, Martin's father had come home from work. Everyone was at the table. What's this sad face, son? His father asked. Martin put down his fork. Bobby's 
daddy told him to quit playing with me because I am not white. That's not fair. Christine talked and chewed at the same time. No, it's not, Daddy said in a serious voice. Why does color make any difference, Martin asked. Well, some white folks believe they are better than we black people. Mama nodded. So they treat colored people badly. We can't eat in the same restaurants or stay in the same hotels as they do. And let me tell you, children, Daddy said, I do not like being treated differently only because of the color of my skin. Martin looked down at his plate. He didn't feel like eating anymore, but then he got an idea. Can't I change the rules? Can't I change people's minds? He asked his father. Daddy smiled. Yes, you can, he said. You may have lost a friend today, but I want you to remember that friendship has no color, Martin. I will try, Daddy, Martin said. I will try. Martin Luther King Jr. never forgot that hard lesson. He spent his life trying to change people's ideas about friendship and peace. He dreamed of living in a world where all people treat each other fairly. Today, people in the U.S. and other countries work to make Dr. King's dream come true. Here is a timeline of Dr. King's life. 1929, born in Atlanta, Georgia, on January 15th. 1944, began studies at Morehouse College at age 15. 1953, married Coretta Scott. They later had four children. 1955, received a PhD in theology, following his father and grandfather into the Baptist ministry. Also 1955, helped lead a bus boycott started by Rosa Parks against unfair bus laws in Montgomery, Alabama. In 1963, he marched to Washington and made his famous I Have a Dream speech from the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. In 1964, awarded the Nobel Peace Prize, the youngest to ever receive the award. In 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. died in Memphis, Tennessee on April 4th after being shot. Well, looks like Martin learned a very valuable lesson. Sometimes reality and the things around us just don't make sense. And it's not because we don't understand, it's just because they just don't make sense. As Martin grows and becomes a man and goes and earns his doctorate, he keeps the promise to his dad that he's going to try and show to everyone that no matter your race, color, or creed, we are meant to be united. We are meant to be one. And there's no reason for segregation. There's no reason for separation. And we're all one big, dare I say it, happy family. And we should treat each other as such. <laughs> this story was a bit more than our previous stories, but nonetheless, there's always learning to be had out of every book that we read. And don't you forget that. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for this read aloud. I had a blast, as always, and I can't wait to read again with you soon. Oh, 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 one more thing. We are so close to our 200th subscriber, and I cannot wait to see that number. Whenever we do see that number, we have made it our duty to mail five, that's right, five of our previous red books to one lucky subscriber out there. So make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you tell your parents. Make sure you tell your uncles, your aunts, your brothers, your sisters, any and everybody who enjoys these stories to subscribe because they just might be that lucky winner. <laughs> Thank you again for joining me for this read aloud. I had a blast as always. Don't forget to like, subscribe, Comment down below a book that you would like for us to read. And don't forget to share, share, share. That's very important. Don't forget to share. I can't wait to read again with you soon. And don't forget, keep reading.